this one is a connection design problem this is from one of the textbook that I use for this class and this problem is asking for design the this connection so to take this hundred and fifty thousand pounds how many bolts do you need for that uh, where is my pen my pen is not working all right it's working now so to do to carry this hundred and fifty thousand pounds how many bolts do you need now number one check is step number one in connection design or connection problem calculation is to check for the weak bolt so if the bolt is weak then it will be cut off by the plate so let's say this is a bolt very nice drawing there so the bolt is sitting right here maybe one of the bolt like that so if the bolt is weak then what's gonna happen is this plate will go this way and it will cut this bolt right here and also here so if you kind of try to visualize what's gonna look like so maybe that plate move away so you take that bolt pieces there and then rest of the stuff it stays there so how much it takes to cut this and if you look at the bolt cross section they look exactly like a circular cross section so how much shear stress shear force you need to calculate that so we can write this the allowable shear stress shear load allowable load that this bolt can maximum take is the allowable shear stress times the area of the bolt times the the number of plane is going to cut now you can see it's going to cut here and also here so two plus in this case times uh, the bolts in the way the number of bolts that you're going to cut so let's say you got a bunch of bolts here not just one or two we don't know that's what we have to find out so in this case the allowable load is given 150,000 pounds that is the maximum this connection should be designed for and then the allowable stress that can be found from the table in any appendix of the book so just to look at the table for the bolt which is 8325 n which means no threads in the bolt so that would be this uh, a 325N, that means threads in the shear plane. So this is the allowable stress for the bolt material. So we can go back and plug that 27,000 um, pound per square inch. So that's 27, oops, 27 KSI times the area pi by 4. The bolt is 3 fourth inch D square inch squared times the number of plane is 2 in this case and then times n which we're going to find out so I have calculated this n 6.29 bolts you cannot have a fraction bolt so either it has it has to be a whole number so the minimum number of bolts you need is 7 however we'll see in later that what number of bolts is not really a good idea so actually it's going to be eight number of bolts on each side of the plane so on each side of the connections you got this side and this side of the plate for on each side you need eight bolts to carry this 150 pound loads for this type of bolt a 325n type of bolt so this is for the weak bolt. Now we're going to test for the weak plate. So I'm going to go to the next page. So if the plate is weak, so let's draw the top view of the one side of the plate. So I say this is the plate. And you have a bolt there. If the plate is weak, so we're going to step number two is we are testing for the weak plate step number two uh, I got number wrong places step number two is the weak plate meaning that the plate will be cut by the bolt 
So if the plate is cut by the ball, let's draw the full 3D view so I can show. So that's the plate like that. Now if the plate is cut by the ball, then it's going to make this rectangle cut like that. So how much allowable shear stress, shear load, we allow for the plate? So the allowable load for the plate is equal to the allowable stress for the plate times the area that is cut by the bolt. So I would say plate area cut by the bolt. I don't know what's the symbol to use. Then the number of plate, number of plates is cutting and then the number of bolts. Now we we are going to design this connection for 150,000 pounds. So that's 150,000 and for the plate material it was uh, I think ASTM uh, A36 plate material. If you look at the um, stress for that is 87 KSI. So that is the allowable stress you can have for this plate material. So 87 KSI times the area of the plate that is cut, which is the diameter of the bowl. So this is the diameter of the bowl. And this is the thickness of the plate. So this is the area cut. In this case, both of these are 3 fourth inches it could be different and then it's only one plate is cut so n is one here and then the capital n the number of balls we're going to find out so the number of balls i have found is 3.1 balls once again we cannot have fraction ball so this would be four balls on each side of the connection To carry this load. Now remember, we for the, for the weak plate, four bolt is enough. However, for the bolt to be okay for this connection, we need eight of them. So we actually need, <coughs> excuse me, eight bolts on each side. So step number three is to sketch the bolt. So that's the different from the just load calculations. Step number three in connection design is the arrange the bolt arrangement or sketch the bolt. So, so I'm going to just do the one side. Maybe I'll do both. So you got one side plate here. I'll draw the top view only. So this is the plate. So I got eight balls. So I can arrange four like this and then four like this. And also eight balls on this side as well. So after I do that, then I'm going to have to check the tensile failure because I'm cutting lots of hole on this plate will this going to fail or survive? So to do that, I need to calculate the projected area. Just project there. So I'm going to cut that and also project that. So the material that going to take this tensile load only, this is the area and then rest of it. Because in tensile failure, what's going to happen is it will start to crack from here, crack from here, crack from here so like that so it's going to separate it into two pieces in any of these places so the amount of load the load is carried by the material left so this vacuum spaces where you have the bolt they will not carry any tensile load at all now to test the tensile loading so you have two different equations for that so one is using the gross area and one is using the uh, net area. So if I use the gross area, the allowable load using the gross area, P gross is equal to the gross area 
times the allowable tensile stress. Now, and then for using the net area, which is subtracting the um, the holes, so P allowable load using the net area. So the gross area is basically the total area. So this which I don't think is really logical to use however mostly all textbook does that and that's 12 inches so gross area would be 12 times 3 fourth and net area would be 12 times 3 fourth minus these two holes so two hole makes a rectangular piece this is one of the common mistake in the exam. People use pi by 4 d square. However, you can see that the projected area is a rectangular piece. Not really that. So if I use the gross area, now I can go show you that table. You can see if you use the gross area, this is the stress you use, 21.6. Using the net area, you use this uh, 29. Um, tensile allowable stress. So let's just go back and plug all this number. So net gross area would be 12 times 3 fourth times 21.6. So I get uh, 194.4 thousand pounds, which is more than 150 that we have to carry by this connection. So it's okay here. Now using the net area, that's going to be um, the net area. This is calculated as 7.69. So you can do 7.69 times the 29 KSI when I use the net area. So it gets 223,000 pounds, which is also more than 150,000 pounds that we have to carry. So to summarize the design problem, connection problem, first you calculate the for the weak ball, test for weak ball, find the number of balls, and test for weak plates, find the number of balls, and use the maximum number of balls so it can both plate and ball um, can be okay with this load. And then you make the arrangement of the ball like that in a two gauge line. This one is arranged in a two gauge line. That was the problem asking. So use it like a two gauge line. Um, so place like that. And then after you arrange that, then you go to the tensile testing because you are cutting some holes, the plate just might fail because of the tensile loading. So you test for the tensile loading and then done. If it fails, then you have to increase the number of bolts. In this case, it didn't.